in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed first peter now is it second peter one from verse two down to four it says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our lord jesus christ is that true then the bible says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness he says through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue it says whereby uh, we are given these great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust here's the point it says by these great and precious promises we will validate that indeed we have been recipients of his divine nature that means if it is true that that life is at work in you there must be evidences expressions that show that today right now you are a carrier of that divine life it must move beyond just a confession it must move beyond a consciousness into an experience are we together now yes having the consciousness of it is powerful but you will be frustrated if all you have is the consciousness of it the life of god is supposed to be an experience jesus told them repent for the kingdom of god is now at hand meaning it is within your reach he says oh taste and see not just oh assume you can taste and see that the lord is good <laughs> hallelujah so can we discuss a few things today ask the lord for understanding one more time father i receive understanding in the name of jesus i receive understanding hallelujah praise the name of the lord so in this kingdom the bible paul in in his exegesis of scripture what we call redemption realities let me start from there paul began to teach us a few things and some of the things that paul began to teach us were the things that jesus told the disciples they did not have the capacity to bear there were many things that Paul would later teach us that Jesus did not even teach the disciples because he told them it would be a waste to teach you at this level. Are we together? He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear it now. How be it when the spirit of truth is come that he will guide you into all truth. Now, Paul, by the spirit, has received this a download of many things among them the believers advantage listen very carefully paul began to open us up to the realities of redemption it was paul that made sense he helped us understand the implication of the death as we call it the burial and the resurrection and even the exalted position of jesus it didn't matter to us without his knowledge we did not even know the meaning of that to our lives it was paul who began to give us that understanding that there is a prophetic implication to jesus's dying he is coming back to life and he's been exalted in fact it was paul that made us know that we were in him and we were with him while that happened are we together so paul tells us in ephesians chapter 1 chapter 2 chapter 3 he begins to give us a sound exegesis helping us number one to understand the believer's position in christ helping us to understand that this is what happened to christ when he died when he resurrected when he was exalted 
are now coronated as lord of all and king of kings and then he says that while all of that was happening that we were with him and we were in him and now he teaches us to walk in the consciousness of these provisions are we together for example give us ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 please ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 let's read together one to read blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus who hath blessed us now pay attention to this scripture paul is teaching us and he's saying that god and father of our lord jesus christ hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings they are blessings but they are spiritual and the bible says they are in heavenly places in christ they have a location are we together now he's giving us a very intelligent information so that on account of all that happened the entire capture of the redemptive activities of the christ we have been given many many advantages including this that he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings now what are they what exactly are spiritual blessings the bible says all spiritual blessings what are they can you show me what a spiritual blessing looks like give me a picture because we learn in pictures if i say orange you have an idea of what an orange looks like if i say mango you have an idea of what a mango looks like if i say spiritual blessing do you have a pictorial representation of what it means so that you will know when you have it it says he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ this right here ladies and gentlemen is the bible's definition of grace that right here is the most concise definition of what we call grace that the grace of god generically speaking is an expression of all of the provisions that have been made available to the believer through god but routed only through the office of the christ is called grace so grace of god is not just limited to its dimensional operation when you want to understand the grace of god it is important for you to know that grace intrinsically represents all the spiritual provisions the bible calls it all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and it is given to the saints in and through the office of the christ that means according to the economy of the kingdom there is no other channel for accessing grace outside of the office of the christ are we together now yes this is very important so the bible says we have been blessed it never said we have been given he said we have been blessed accessing all spiritual blessings is a blessing to all believers are we together grace a lot of believers do not really understand what the grace of god is and it is the reason why we are not able to walk in the experience of this divine life so most people just think grace is limited to favor or grace is limited to salvation those are just the dimensional workings of grace but intrinsically when you want to understand grace you need to know that grace is a holistic capture of everything god has made available to the saints that means anointing is grace faith is grace mercy is grace speed is grace everything that can become an advantage to the believer as far as your sojourn is concerned is called grace do we understand now so when you are talking of grace you don't isolate it in pieces except if you are dealing with the operation if i look at a life and i see a prosperous person indeed this man has accessed the grace of god if i see a man manifesting extraordinary intelligence like daniel that is a manifestation of the grace of god if i see a man who is able to excel in career it is the grace of god 
the grace of God is like energy energy may not be created or destroyed but it can be converted to several things the same energy producing light is what will be turning a mechanical system is what will be giving powering this mic it the dimensions are different but it is still the same energy isn't it interesting that you plug uh, something to your socket and then several gadgets are connected to it and they'll be performing several things, all powered by the same energy. That energy is called grace. Are we, are we together now? So that when you understand that based on God's dealing with you, listen carefully, praying for grace is not a wise prayer because it has been made available already if it is not made manifest to your life there are men you have to troubleshoot other things but as far as the manifestation of grace is concerned the bible tells us that blessed be god and father of our lord jesus christ and he said he had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places now whether your life has already captured this as a reality or not is another discussion but you must settle it for a fact are we together now that the grace of god has been made available to me for the purpose of our discussion um there are two dimensions of grace that is important for believers to understand for the purpose of our discussion this morning number one is called saving grace you may want to write that down and please pay very close attention the first dimension of grace that we want to understand tonight is called saving in grace in titus chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible talks about the grace that brings salvation and the bible says when it has to do is that did i get that right please look for it for me is it 211 to one saving grace the grace that bringeth salvation thank you 211 have appeared unto how many men Amen. the grace that brings salvation translates to salvation have appeared to all men they didn't pray for it. They didn't desire it. It appeared unto all men. Very, very powerful. The second dimension of grace theologically is called enabling grace. Write it down, please. Enabling grace. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Enabling grace. Here's what the apostle says. I can do all things. I was teaching somewhere and I said, what an arrogant statement. How can a man stand before a people and make such an arrogant statement? I can do all things. Do you know how many things there are to be done in your life and in destiny? How dare you stand to make such a statement recognizing the limitation of time? You are not omnipotent. You are not omnipresent. You are not omniscient. You do not even know the things that are waiting tomorrow. And yet, here is a man who stands in the presence of people to make such an audacious statement. I can do all things. In our world today, you send such a man to jail for making such a nasty statement. But he does not stop there. This is the difference between an arrogant statement in ignorance and one who is speaking from a standpoint of revelation. He said, I can do all things. And he tells you the basis of that confidence. He says, through Christ, which strengtheneth me. There is an enablement that is not intrinsic within me. It is outsourced. And that becomes the basis of my confidence. So you will see me accomplishing possibilities that are not given unto men, men to accomplish. He said, when you see supernatural strides in and through my hands, the basis of it is that there is Christ. There is an anointing and an increasing that comes from God that is able to strengthen me. This is very powerful. I can do all things through Christ which 
Seventy. One shout a loud amen. amen. And the Bible teaches us a few things about this enabling grace. It tells us that this dimension of grace can increase and it can increase as your enlightenment increases. It says grace and peace be multiplied. Are we together now? Grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. Knowledge. The more you access light, the more you give authorization for this dimension of enabling grace to multiply through you. And it translates to the kinds and the levels of possibilities that you command through your life. So the difference between any two people is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The difference between two people is not necessarily even the election of grace. It is the degree to which they have been able to access light that has translated to a high walking of this grace in their lives when you see any two people I tell you this the distinctive difference spiritually speaking is the level of grace that is at work in them which is based on the light that they have accessed are we learning now so challenges are not generic one person can be stunted by the presence of a challenge and exhaust all that you know to do and the, the your suffering or, or, or your 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 limitation can misrepresent god in face of that challenge because there is a dimension of grace required to surmount that challenge and you have not accessed it through light another person will come and walk through that situation as if it does not exist the difference is not the power of god the difference is the grace component that is at work in your life through light so he says grace and peace be multiplied is someone learning now grace and peace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied now but my 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 main discussion is making these realities that are available in Christ to be made manifest in our lives pastor do you know that the frustration of most believers is not lack of awareness of the provisions that are available i think we have done a good job in in the body of christ to help believers come into the consciousness of the vast promises that are available to the believer so the average believer who has been faithful in church is aware that healing is yours is am i right on that is aware that it is god's will to prosper you is aware for instance that the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more even unto the perfect day there are certain levels of ignorance that should not be found in the life of a faithful believer again because i submit to you that men and women of god have done quite a good job in bringing this superior spiritual orientation but the the problem is translating those realities that we confess to become an experience here and now this is the frustration of many believers so while many are jumping and saying in the name of Jesus I am aware that it is child healing is children's bread they are dying of sickness you are seeing that their bodies are not responding to that confession the body is breaking down is deteriorating consistently for instance, someone will say in the name of Jesus, I know that I am prosperous. I refuse and I reject poverty. He's saying that while he's driven out of his house for rent. And he's saying that while they throw him away from his job. And then he continues standing in faith. And one year becomes five years, becomes 30 years until his life becomes a misrepresentation. If you are to study God using his life, you will hate God. Because something does not add up. Is someone learning this morning? I came to solve this puzzle for you. Why is it that there is a growing divide between the things we purport to believe, which the Bible attests to that are true, and our experience? The disciples themselves were frustrated because Jesus came proposing very great things for them. When he arrived, he spoke about a kingdom that was superior. The disciples were happy. They left their jobs, their professions with joy. 
running to pursue something that was more superior at a point in their walk with jesus they started complaining to one another i hope this man is not a fraudster because we don't understand this thing the way we are just going we are not having an opportunity to enjoy this supposed all the the pictures that he painted for us and one time peter and the rest summoned courage and they said listen we're not going to allow you cheat us like this we're adults we have left all to follow you go straight to the point what do we have to enjoy in this thing because so far we tried to heal someone we were disappointed everything we tried it looked like it was not working for us then jesus looks at them and says no man who had left all of this and that for my sake and for the kingdoms he says but in this life he will receive this and then in the life to come life eternal jesus was saying you need to be able to trust what i am teaching you you need to trust what you are becoming ladies and gentlemen can i tell you if we do not remedy this in the days that are coming like it is already happening in europe already happening in the u.s and in many of the western worlds there is a whole generation that is defined in our understanding about god there is a lot of theory about what god can do there is a lot of theory about the power of god our lives are full of so many propositions and remember that was what made jesus cause the fig tree the fig tree had green leaves enough to attract even Jesus even Jesus fell for that scam of the fig tree Jesus your all-knowing Jesus hungry and he saw a tree that had green leaves and he came there expecting to eat and when he came he saw the tree taken from the earth but not producing fruit and Jesus your Jesus the epitome of love cause that tree i hope you know that he calls men trees too that he shall be like a tree that is planted that means if you like a tree begin to manifest the similitude of that fig tree to attract people by making all kinds of spiritual propositions i know my god i dare you to come and sometimes we make audacious statements that are even legally wrong if you come and you are not healed, I will tear my Bible. You know, we make some kind of statement. And then, now I'm not being sarcastic. I'm provoking you for a reason. And you find out that the person says, come on, I don't understand. I used to practice wizardry. And I used to have one man behind my village. At least his, his margin of error was not so much. Now you told me to leave that and you have now proposed a superior faith practice. I have come, I have prayed, I have given all that I've recorded for the last two years is losing my job, losing my children, losing everything, not finishing any project. You see, all that I've described is someone who is sitting in church this morning, right now, just smiling but honestly beginning to get tired and saying, Apostle, I, I don't know the name of this. I have no right to charge God with fraud. I have no right to say he deceived me. But someone needs to explain to me, while the more I seem to be godly, the more the gap between the experience of the kingdom. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the lord is good there is a consolation when you see results that come from the word of god now i have told you we never serve god just because of things but make no mistakes about it there is a consolation that comes to the believer when your life begins to command potent ever increasing results is that true for the bible says where the carcasses are it says there the eagles will gather a hospital never calls patients a restaurant never calls patients it is hunger and desire that drives people there a hospital is just equipped enough and you will find patients queue up 
patiently an ATM does not talk an ATM does not sing praise and worship an ATM does not have a billboard it just stands there full of money and you see people impatiently queuing for hours complaining but remaining there that is the power of results listen 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 if you pay attention to what I'm teaching you you will walk out of this conference rejoicing knowing that I have found the key hallelujah it is the reason why many people come to church on Sunday and then they delve into all kinds of things on Monday and Tuesday and they say well the man is not like it's exactly bad there are all kinds of things here there is a Bible on his table there are many other books the most important thing is that he mixes everything and while it looks very sarcastic you don't want to know what men can do when they are bankrupt of results when a woman who has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for 10 15 years remember two months into her wedding she started speaking and said I know God will do it don't worry after 15 years what she rejected she may receive it now again you will come and say I told you 15 years ago would you want to consider this you say okay let me look at it even Jesus got to a point where he almost aborted redemption he said father if it be thy will pain can do something to even the most honest of people pain can push men to the corridors of compromise it's easy to talk in church and say don't do this don't that the cure is to show people the way to get potent results why will someone watch his mother dying of something and you've applied everything you said the word of God said to do and it does not seem to be working and someone from a distance is freely offering a solution desperation can push men a mother will not watch her child die like that before you know it they will get up and do things you cannot imagine I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men I will hold on through the storm Yes, I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men. Now listen, pay attention now. The assignment, listen carefully please. The assignment and the jurisdiction of grace is to give you the consciousness of the provisions that are available for you the assignment of grace is not possession the assignment of grace is the consciousness of the provision you need to listen to this the operation of grace in terms of its operation now is limited to supplying you information about the vast riches that have been provided for but it does not automatically translate into possession give us this scripture i hope i get it right in jesus name deuteronomy 2 24 my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men i want to show you a principle there can we have this in Amplified? Or any, okay, well, let's, let's just work with KJV. It says, rise ye up. Thank you. Take your journey and pass over the valley of Ammon. He was talking to the children of Esau. Behold, I have given into your hand. God is speaking now. Behold, behold means see conceive as a reality in your spirit i have given into your hand sihon the amorite the king of jeshbon and his land he says i have given you but begin to possess it and contend with him in battle what kind of a statement is this 
I have given you as for this one you can begin to claim it it is your inheritance but he's saying as far as the experience of it is concerned you have to master the dynamics of possessing it now this man can remain defeated while he's saying i know god said it did god lie no but is he in the place now no this is the challenge with many believers the word of god says you are the head and not the tail did god lie but my life is not yet showing the experience of that headship. I have given into your hand. You would think by that statement, you would step in and not see giants. You would think by that statement, you would wake up and just find a desolate land. He said, I have given you. He was doing something to his consciousness. But he says, as far as the experience of dominion is concerned, begin to possess it begin to possess it i have made you blessed even financially but begin to give visibility and manifestation to that speaking and if these guys failed and all through their life they never possessed it god did not lie do you know that even at the defeated state of the believer experientially speaking it does not change the integrity of the word of god it is only that most believers have not understood the entire dynamics between the prophetic speakings of god and the experiential manifestation so many people remain disappointed i know what i had i know what god said and yet their lives are never able to capture the reality of what he said this right now is the assignment of this mystery in the scripture called faith the assignment of faith is to work with the information that grace has provided and make it become your experience. Please listen carefully. Faith has no ministry until the reality has been established as far as the grace of God is concerned. But the moment grace brings to your consciousness what God has done, faith takes it from there. The assignment of faith is to transport realities from these heavenly places to your life. Watch this. If I have a tap, a tap, T-A-P, that brings water. Let's say this is my garden right here where this uh, monitor is. And that's the tap there if I open it there it will not reach my garden to water it are we together I there is endless supply flowing from the tap but that is not where I need my garden can my crops can be starving of water it does not stop that garden it does not mean that there's insufficiency of water there's insufficiency of water in my garden not water board are we together now the assignment of faith is to connect from that tap to where this water is needed are we together now and the distance between the tap and the garden will be equal to the length of the host there are times that you need to go and still buy another host join it again because by all means you need to transfer the assignment is to transfer this water isn't it amazing that right from the water board to your house water is getting there they they deploy all kinds of skill they even use a pump all kinds of things to make sure that even if you are staying in a 10-story building water from a position that may be down it gets to your kitchen it gets to your bathroom that is the assignment of faith listen carefully so this garden can have the crops shrinking and based on the testimony of that garden there is drought whereas you move to water board and they say we have never stopped supplying water what is the difference to be able to create a system that bridges that thing that's what god has come to show you this morning that it is not because the speakings of god are a lie it is that grace has done its work profitably in your life by bringing to you the consciousness of the provisions that are available in Christ but that there is a technology that translates the prophetic speakings of God from the realm of the spirit to your life 
And most of us have not labored in the spirit to work on this connection. And so you find out that there is a great divide between what God has said and what you are experiencing. If you are learning, say amen. amen. What is faith? Let me speak for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Are we learning already? The Bible talks about faith in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Four scriptures really in the whole Bible where he talks about faith as far as the just is concerned. He says, now the just shall live more than just obtaining results. He says the just shall live by faith. But if any man shall draw back, my soul will not have pleasure in him. The just shall live by faith. In Mark chapter 6, when you read from verse 1 to 6, the Bible talks about Jesus being surprised at the unbelief. Do we read that now for sake of time? Okay, let's try it. Verse 2, very quickly. The Bible says, he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished as he's saying. They were trying to ask, when did this man get the kind of wisdom and look at the mighty works that accompany that wisdom? Verse 3, he says, is this not the carpenter's son, the brother of James and so on and so forth? And then verse 4, we're reading to 6. The Bible says, Jesus told them, a prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. Verse 5. And he could not do mighty works. The Bible never said he did not do. He could not do meaning that he attempted to do certain things. Against what you thought that everywhere Jesus went, things were just happening. There were places that the Bible does not hide that Jesus was disappointed. He was disappointed he could not do any mighty work save that he laid his hands on a few sick folk and healed them. And Jesus, the Bible says, he marveled because of their unbelief. That was a problem. The problem was not his power. The problem was not his Godship being questioned. That there was such unbelief in that place that not even the presence of Jesus could make any difference. Unbelief. The word of God personified was there, but unbelief made it of non-effect. Are we together now? So it is not just the presence of the word that generically produces miracles. There is a technology that makes the word potent. In this case, the word of God personified in the Christ was there and yet nothing happened. Unbelief. What is faith? Let's write a few definitions. If God is helping you, please say amen. amen. I'll give you two definitions very quickly. Number one, faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. Please write. Faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. Faith is absolute confidence in God and in the integrity of his word. That is the first definition of faith I want you to have. Absolute confidence in God. The Bible says, but I know whom I have believed. It says, and I am persuaded that he is able to commit, to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. I am persuaded. A depth of confidence. Number two, which is a very important definition. Faith is the name given to the action that you take. Please underline the word action. Faith is the name given to the action that you take. Based on your conviction, faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. The name given to the action that you take based on your conviction or in response to your conviction of who God is 
and the integrity of the person of of his word his person are we together faith in this sense is the name given to the action please someone shout the action one more time say the action so i always like to use this example can i use a gentleman please come my friend come you two both of you please stand here facing me stand here stand here all of you watch this watch this now you stand here my friend thank you i want to give them can someone give me anything that looks like an envelope a gift something i want to give them something thank you thank you for this god bless you now watch this is it true that this is real let's assume that there's some money here when you use money church people seem to understand what you are saying are we together now so the assignment watch this now i have no particular bias for any one of them and based on the abundance of what i have i can sort any one of them are we together now but i am not in their dimension this is where i am and this is the assignment of grace to open you up and say listen there is such a provision here is someone understanding what i'm doing now so ordinarily speaking they would not know but the grace of god has appeared to them telling them there is healing there is prosperity there is a life of victory that is in christ but the condition listen carefully now just knowing it does not bring them into the possession of it if i ask you now is there healing that i'm holding no sir no no yes i'm holding it it's just that it's not in your life you get the point now are you aware that i'm holding this envelope yes are you aware that i'm holding this envelope? yes sir is it in your hands one years two years 15 years you started learning this when you were a teenager now you are about to be a grandfather you have not yet come into the possession you will start teaching your children too don't ever doubt if they tell you there is an envelope i remember when i was 12 years it is not knowing that there is an envelope is accessing it and enjoying what is there are you getting the point now now watch this i define faith as number one your confidence in God so you have to believe that I'm not scamming you and that is why the Bible is a compendium of God's integrity tested through different dispensations he gave us the right to probe and vet him and find out whether he's worthy of our believing him from Genesis to Revelation the Bible does not hide anything about God as far as his dealings with men is concerned so that we can vet him and find out whether he's worthy of our trust. The second definition, the name given to the action that you take. Believers, God is showing you where we have been missing it now. The action that you take. So it is true that you believe there is such a reality. But now, here is the instruction. And two of you, I want you to do something for me. I will start with you. I'm going to ask you to come and receive this. I want you to do any other thing if you want go there if you like stroll if you like sit down but don't come you get your your own now we're acting a drama now and then for you when it's your turn and I say come I want you to walk gallantly and come and receive it ready so this guy got born again before this guy are we together now and now here is the instruction connected to accessing this if you can walk from where you are and come and meet me it is yours let's start he's taking action but is it an action of obedience look at this 1991 1992 1993 blaming technology blaming change of government he's doing so many things with his life and i'm here standing and you are learning God using his life and you continue getting angry with me because this is the template of me you are studying from are you seeing that now you are using a very this man's life is misrepresenting my love misre when you study scripture and find out what God has said and you look at the life of a supposed believer it does not seem to add up now watch this for 15 years this guy's pain 
start editing the theology of God's integrity because pain can start re-editing. Maybe God did not really mean this. Now imagine that this guy is a pastor and you are a member in his church. He will use his pain to start doctoring certain things about God. Are we together? Listen carefully. And then here comes this gentleman who came to Olive Brook Church from January and had the opportunity to receive God's word. And now he's learned that there is a responsibility component to accessing your inheritance. Now, gentlemen, walk, come and pick it up. Watch this. This guy will turn and say, this is not fair. I've been in this thing for 33 years. Based on what did you come and just access this? Healing, anointing, speed, prosperity. It is unfair. You are not supposed to be in this position. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. It says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.